Coming up on Roland Martin Unfiltered for Wednesday, March 27th, 2019. Hi, I'm Monique Presley in for Roland Martin. He will be back tomorrow and I know you will all be glad about that. But in today's show, the man who drove his car into a crowd of counter protesters at the Charlottesville Unite the Right rally had pled guilty to hate crimes. Facebook bans posts featuring racist content. It's about damn time. The Trump administration cuts all federal funding for the Special Olympics. Well, I mean, actually, they proposed the cuts, but it's still cruel and dumb. Congressman Barbara Lee takes Secretary of State Betsy DeVos to the woodshed on her decision to curtail oversight of discrimination in school discipline. We've got the video and the receipts. A new fight over health care. The Democrats introduced legislation to strengthen the Affordable Care Act. Trump wants to kill it in the courts. Even Republicans, they used to be Republicans, right, are appalled. The president of the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, or AFS-MEE, sits down with Roland for an in-depth interview on the key role unions play to empower workers and combat income inequality. A hunger strike to end violence enter its 19th day. We'll talk to a man on strike. Another Congresswoman of color. There are so many now, I'm so thankful. <laughs> this time, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez of New York issues a thoughtful and devastating beatdown of critics of her Green New Deal. I mean, if you don't have anything, don't say anything, right? We've got the inspiring video. And another crazy ass white person gosh lord i'm a guest host forgive me for this segment jesus and the public and dr monago who finds this funny upset with signs in spanish at a mexican restaurant yeah there's always video right now there's video for everything it's time to bring the funk on roland martin unfiltered let's go He's See James Alex Fields Jr. I hate even saying that. Pled guilty to federal hate crimes late today. Fields drove his car into a crowd of counter protesters at the white supremacist rally in Charlottesville, Virginia, in August of 2017. You know, the fine people on both sides rally. We all remember who said that, right? Fields took the deal to avoid the death penalty. He was convicted in state court of first-degree murder and was sentenced to life in prison. Fields murdered Heather Hare and, injur and injured dozens more. And all that relates to our next story. Facebook announced today that Facebook and Instagram which it owns, how many of y'all didn't know that, will ban praise, support, and representation of white nationalism and separatism. The ban takes effect next week after years of pressure from civil rights and social justice groups like the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under Law and Color of Change. I love all of them. Facebook had previously banned white supremacist content. 
Brian Fishman, Facebook's counterterrorism policy director, said, quote, we decided that the overlap between white nationalism, separatism, and white supremacy is so extensive, we really can't make a meaningful distinction between them. Facebook said in its statement, Searches for terms associated with white supremacy will surface a link to, quote, life after hate. I'm sorry. I can't stop laughing. White, <laughs> sorry, white life. Life <laughs> after hates page where people can find support in the form of education interventions, academic research, and outreach. Oh, I cannot wait for my panel on this because I have no words. Y'all, come on. Here we come in. Joining us on the panel today is John Christopher Pua, White House correspondent for Talk Media News, Deshondra Jefferson, principal with the Rabin, 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 Rabin Group. That's enough. That's a, no, I want to get it right. The Rabin Group. And Dr whatever his name is, <laughs> Leo Monago, our dear friend, friend of the show, socio-political analyst and activist, so he says, welcome to the show. Well, I've never. <sighs> I'm in the crossfire. We in the crossfire. You're be. not in a crossfire. You're the strongest person in the room other than me. <laughs> Barbara Lee well, and DeVos on discipline discrimination. How downright well. mean is the Trump administration? Take look at these faces of special... They don't want me to talk about that. They keep rolling the prompter, though. Listen. I hear you, Jay. Y'all, Roland... <laughs> we ready to jump in, okay? We ready to jump Roland in isn't here. I just want to say, I wanted to hear from the panel, but the prompter kept rolling. Don't blame me for this. Look, guys... He's the strongest one in the room. And because of that, I'm not going to you first. Dr. Buah, <laughs> what say you to these strange things? Well, first of all, I am a professor and a lecturer at the Catholic University and has been at Georgetown for six years, but I don't have a PhD, so I'm a professor or adjunct, not a doctor. No, but I can call you doctor. You can call me. You can call me. Doctor Monago already said. You can call me whatever you like. Exactly. But I, but I have to just say that for the for the record. But it's a pleasure to be here. I've done Roland show many times, and I'm delighted to be with you in this wonderful panel. Thank you. Now, what to say? I I got a lot to say. First but of all, limit it to the first topic because we we're have talking a long about show. we're talking about the Secretary of Education. No. Which one? Go back. Heather Heyer? Yes. I know Heather. I know the area. I go there. I've been going to... Heather is with Heaven. I've been going to... I, I know that. I've been going to Charlottesville for 25 years, and I've, every time I go, I, I leave more flowers on the spot where she was killed by that vicious, horrible man. And, and it I, wasn't both sides, which is our It point. was not both sides. Yeah. It was hate. And you know what they did the night before? They marched with candles <clears throat> on the University of Virginia, and they said, Jews will never replace us. You know what that means? That goes back to Nazi Germany in the 1930s. And as the great George Centignana said, those who cannot remember history are condemned to repeat it. But some don't even know history. No, they don't. Dr. Bua, I insist upon That's it. That's fine. But <laughs> Professor Bua. That's fine. Some don't even know the history. So it's not a question of um, forgetting what we've learned. You know, and I'm and I'm I'm saying this with all compassion and sensitivity. I know you Sometimes are. the people who are listening are so young, and our school system is so flawed that when you start talking about things that happened in the 1930s, they don't have any idea. We, we like can, we, I can say Juneteenth, right? and they'll be like, "Oh, that's a holiday. Not sure why," and they'll have no idea. So it's up to us what to that teach means. Them. It is. It's up to us and to teach. It's up to us to teach format. them. And this is an excellent format because, thank, thank God for Roland, he gives us the space to teach. Yes. But in a situation like this, I'm just trying to find out from you, yes. as someone who is a professor and is responsible, 
God help you for teaching those behind us. What can we say to these things? That's a, that's a biblical scripture, but no, whatever. I understand. What can we say? And you know, I'm also a White House correspondent. I know. It puts me in a very unusual place, trying to explain to my students, undergrad and grad, exactly what happened at the White House today. And I'm thinking, well, well wait a minute. Maybe you can explain to me what happened at the White House today. But uh, it is our obligation, and we must be there for them. And we must train, teach, and work, and be compassionate about the youth. And and we, I don't want to segue. It's your, it's your show, but we talk about Betsy DeVos, who is the Secretary oh, of Education. Oh, we're going to get to her. She never taught a class in her life. She's going to get all the time she deserves tonight Where? and then some. Where? On what? That's going to be a Dr. Hour. Jefferson. What level? <laughs> Dr. Jefferson. Right. No, but see, we can condense it because I know with few words I can do great things. And I feel with this panel, that's where we are tonight because what she did, uh, we have something to say about it. But no, where this is concerned, where we're talking about great people on both sides, mm -hmm. Well, basically, he's normalizing white supremacy, white nationalism, alt right, whatever you want to call it. Trump's words are, are normalizing the hate that we see growing across not just our country, but around the world. You know, he's using his bully pulpit not to unify our nation, but to continue to divide us. And that's a problem. You know, and looking at what Facebook today, the actions that they took, they should have done it years ago. Listen, groups like Muslim Pus Public Affairs Council, um, lawyers Committee, Color of Change. These groups have been weighing on Facebook for a couple years now, right. lobbying them to follow their own policies. And now they're finally taking a stand and saying, wait a minute, you know, this is, we're not going to give a platform to this kind of speech. Personally, I think it's about time they should have done it a long time ago. I think social media is, you know, white supremacists have been using it without penalty to spread their messages of hate. And I'm glad that we see Facebook is taking a lead and saying, no more, not on us. But is Facebook really taking a lead? And I hear you, Dr. Buett, Dr. Jefferson, mm -hmm. Dr. Cleo. There was another person named Dr. Cleo. We won't even talk about it tonight. Is it really about Facebook taking a lead? Or is it about what happens when inevitably the pressure is too much from too many different sides where you see we can't survive unless we take this stance. Because frankly, that's the way I see what happened today. To me, I was like, everybody was saying, right? It's about damn time. But for me, I was saying it's way past time because you only got the, the way the cows, the prodding, like we push them, we put a, something on the back of their behind. I feel like everybody got that stamp on the butt today, and we heard this from Facebook. If, if you disagree with me, tell me. No, I agree with you completely. I believe that Facebook did what they did because of CYA. Um, covering your B. The, the, the C, you're saying cover C, your what? Cover your ass is what A stands for. N you didn't say that, though. I said, but I was trying to be TV. But you can't program. say, you can't say CYA. Say, say CYB. I was, I was getting if ready. If it's going to be cover your B. No, I'm the only, is anybody else ordained? Okay, I'm the only ordained minister. <laughs> so if you Not say yet. CYA <laughs> and <laughs> I know that it's cover your ass, I don't expect you to say CYA and then say cover your B. You're not even saying but. Come on, Cleo. What happened? Well, I was getting ready to say a few things, Gentleman. but there was an interruption. From but, uh, the host? From the host, yes. The guest host. <laughs> the guest host. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yes, um, I think just like with J John, what's the pizza do? And oh, Shaq, Papa John. And Papa John and no, Shaq and all that. that was horrible. All these people are covering themselves. Horrible. And my concern, as usual, was that we, black people and others who claim to be decent, get bought by these surface, superficial things that people do to cover themselves while they stay racist. My concern is just really, there's really no infrastructural transformation. There's just people, because Facebook has done some things that I've seen that's racist. They've even blocked people who are, who are pro-black from getting their voice across and mess with the algorithms. I mean, there's all kinds of things Facebook mm. says. Cleo, uh, Facebook and Instagram. Yes. There are uh, just 
I don't, I don't know if I want to call them journalism publications, whatever they are, they're putting news out where people are watching it, like Black Wall Street, and they have to post all the time and say, Instagram is keeping you all from watching us. They're keeping us yeah. from adding our numbers. Yes. And it's supposed to be a free format. I've you experienced know? that personally in my own work, which I won't get into in any detail, but again, just to reiterate the point, in, in agreement with you, this is a superficial surface covering because these three organizations that you mentioned put so much pressure on them and they don't want to look racist. As I said on shows before, even there's Klan members who don't want to deal with the public shame of looking racist, so they put on a face to make she themselves look like they're not, but they have not changed. A face of mayor, a face of congressman, a face of president. Okay. Um, how downright mean is the Trump administration? Take a look at these faces of Special Olympics. Education Secretary Betsy DeVos just cut all federal funding for the Special Olympics. Now, I'm being given permission by the powers that be on Roland Martin Unfiltered to weigh in here. It's probably because they know that I have an oldest child who has been dealing with an autism diagnosis since he was two and a half. I have been a part of what it means to be in the special education system. I have a child who has great ability in athletics, who has great ability in education, but doesn't fit into the norms of what would be accepted without programs like what was started by the Kennedy family, yes. the Shriver yes. family. Thank you. And so I'm thankful for this little ad lib three seconds because I tweeted and I didn't say anything because I was so mad when I saw what was being done. I just said no words. And for everybody who was following me, they retweeted my no words. Because when you have an administration that is so evil and just sacrosanct and demonic, that when they look for cuts in a proposed budget, what they choose is the Special Olympics? The opportunity for our children to shine when they can't shine in academia, when they can't shine in artistry, but they still have athletic talent? They didn't mean for the, me to go this long, but okay. Here's what I'll say is, <laughs> I find it odd that Secretary DeVos, that second lady of the United States and first lady of the United States went, visited, contributed, participated in Special Olympic events. Just like Meghan McCain said recently, you were at my wedding, Denise. They were all at the Special Olympics, but now they want to cut funding. I'm going to take it to the panel. I feel like because she's a sister in the struggle, come on, Dr. Jefferson, what say you? This is a hard one to speak on because our budget is a reflection of our values. What kind of values do we have if we are targeting the weakest and the most vulnerable amongst us? You know, and even if these children may not have a necessarily a special athletic talent, it is a celebration of them. It is allowing them to be different and to take part. I mean, let, let's face it. I, I don't know the difference between football and basketball, but sports are an integral part of our country. And we have children who want to get out there. I really do. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm exaggerating a little much, but don't ask me names of any Don't do that show. on this show because I have, like, in this space, I kind of have spirit of Roland, which mm -hmm. is so different from my own spirit, but I feel the need to call you out. <laughs> if you say you don't need, you don't understand the difference I, between football basketball. and basketball. But, okay. Like, I, I'm just and not, you seem so fit. I'm just. I'm Girl, just, we can have a talk of the show because I, you know, but anyway, this is like. <laughs> Fit and me do not get along, okay? I was the kid, the last one picked for every sport. Carry it. Carry it well. Don't tell anyone. We're all seeing you. Don't fool me. I love you. Thank Around you. the world, you're looking fit, you look and great. I'm trying Thank to you. go with your story. As Rowan would say, <laughs> go with the bit. I said.
said you're fit, you could have said right there, I ran track in high school. <laughs> Everybody I ran did. Track in high school. Everybody did. Varsity letters, you know, <laughs> what have you. Now, I want you to tell the real story because I want everyone to be on the journey with me. But, True. anyways. <laughs> You know, she's pledged to donate, I don't know, half of her salary or something. Who or cares? But, but here, no, here's the point. That's she's hypocrisy. taking away that's millions of the government's money. Matter. That's she's what I'm not, getting to. She's a hypocrite. She is a hypocrite, but y y they keep talking about, well, the private sector, you know, philanthropic organizations. Come on now. Code word. Means but let's, you're not a, but let's you look at not the, let's look at the underpinning. The same thing with the elite for, schools. Let's look at the underpinning from my another perspective story. what's going on here. The white supremacists and white nationalists are always trying to target the undesirables. Yes. Well, I did that in Nazi these, Germany. That's what well, I was going to say. Throw that. in the gas chamber. I was getting ready to say that before you mentioned it, that, that, yep. that Hitler did the same thing. Yep. And when you were trying to create a pristine white race... He led race, you right there, didn't he, Cleo? Do what? He, read you, he led you right there. Well, it's not difficult. You weren't going to go there. Oh, yes. I appreciate. Oh, I think he was. See between, the way, look between Dr. Buwa. Was it on your notes? It's, it's that page is blank. Stop it. No, no, no. no. <laughs> there are receipts. He got receipts. But I'm my point my is, We're but my point together. is, I don't believe that, Cleo. I want to challenge you on that because you don't believe what? I don't believe that DeVos was always heading that direction because when oh, well, I'm when, not about when, when Marie Shriver no because Marie Shriver rarely does this you know she's always trying to look for that space where she can say okay I see your point and this point and etc and so on and sometimes when I'm following on Twitter I'm like oh god you are a diehard liberal just for today stand up you know but today she came hard she was like mm mm if you're looking for your cuts, you don't have to aim at Special Olympians. You don't have to aim at, you know, I have a child on the autism spectrum, and that's also what they're trying to do. You don't have to aim at people. I'm not even going to get into health care right now. But my point is, as Dr. Bue or Dr. Jefferson were saying, what they're about to do now, this is Trumpian. Well, because that, because Betsy DeVos was fine not just visiting but leaving a check when she was in the private well, sector. Jay, Jay, you, Jay won't you, let me talk. You, stop. Everybody stop. DeVos is also proposing other cuts <laughs> to teacher training and Pell Grants for low-income students for college, oh, saying sorry. there just isn't enough money. But there was plenty of money for tax cuts to the richest 1%. Betsy DeVos also, well, she did not gut. Jay, I'm, I'm, I have spirit of one of my clients who calls out the person who makes you read stuff. I can't say who the client is. But anyway, <laughs> Betsy DeVos also attempted to gut, proposes gutting the Department of Education's effort to stop discrimination in school discipline against students of color. Congressman Barbara Lee of Oakland, thank God for California, or we would all just die, asked why at a hearing yesterday on Capitol Hill. Do we have a tape? Congresswoman, uh, no, no child should be treated or disciplined differently based on his or her race or color or national origin. And if and when they are, our Office for Civil Rights will act swiftly, has act swift, acted swiftly, um, children need to be treated as individuals, not but They're as not being treated as individuals. That's why are. we had this uh, order put in place. And you rescinded that. Again, any student that is treated or disciplined differently because of his or her color or race uh, Madam is Secretary, going to be, that, the that Department is not of acceptable. Civil Rights, your own and Department of Education, Office of Civil Rights, indicated that students of color are suspended three times more than white students. We put into place some requirements that would begin to turn this around. You rescinded those requirements. So Again, what message does no this student, send to school districts? No student should be treated or disciplined differently. Based but Madam on Secretary, their race. they are treated differently. They are treated disciplined. No, if they, differently. if they are, it's discrimination. Well, then the why in the world would you and the office rescind rights. the orders that would correct for this? The letter amounted to quotas. Children Madam, are individuals. They're Madam not. Madam Secretary, this didn't. This didn't involve quotas. This gave direction 
on how to correct this horrible pro problem that we have throughout the country. You go to any community of color where you have schools that are trying to, with minimal resources, provide the best education they can, and you will see what is taking place. So this did not amount to quotas. This amounted to providing those tools and guidance to make sure that students' civil rights are protected. And you rescinded every community, that. Every community needs to be able to handle their classrooms and discipline in the way that works for them. And if Madam Secretary, child, thank God we had Brown child, versus Board of Education. The federal government gave us a chance to go to public schools. We needed the federal race, government to provide that oversight for address. civil rights protections. Democrats today propose legislation to strengthen and improve the Affordable Care Act. Thank God she mentioned Brown versus Board of Education. They won't let me talk about it, but whatever. We're moving on. Trump announces that the Republicans will be the party of health care. And Senator Schumer, by the way, said in a corrected tweet, they will be the party that was the end of health care. But moving on. Embraced his administration's efforts to get it overturned in the courts. This is such a bad idea, parentheses, demonic in parentheses, that even the usually spineless GOP House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy called Trump and asked him not to pick this fight. Mm. McCarthy remembers that Democrats running on health care picked up 40 seats in the November midterms. Trump says he will have a plan better than the Obamacare, something he has been saying for three years. He really, he's been saying it so much longer than that. Another critic of the Trump's plans to destroy the Affordable Care Act is Lee Saunders, the president of the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, or AFS-MEE. Roland sat down with him yesterday. They talked about that and about the collective power unions the collective power unions have to level the playing field for workers. This way, first of all, I'm gonna deal, let's deal with the Affordable Care Act. So all of a sudden, Department of Justice, we're not going to defend the law. The Trump folks want to get rid of all of it. This is what I keep saying to all of these broke, poor, white conservative voters in Kentucky, Mississippi, Alabama, all these places, folks where they hate Obamacare, but they love the Affordable Care Act, Hashtag, we tried to tell you. It's going to disappear. According, I mean, to, according to what they want to do, it's going to disappear. And the question is not only the impact that this will have on folks all over the country, not just in urban areas, but in rural areas, Appalachia, everywhere, but what is the plan if, in fact, it disappears? There is no plan. So millions and millions of people are going to be without health care. And it's unconscionable unconscionable that somebody would even propose doing something like this yet they are with no plan Roland there is no plan to replace it and, right I mean I've been I mean we have 50 plus votes to repeal and replace he trashes the late Senator John McCain left and right all over the place saying oh he voted against it you would have had great health care if he didn't vote for it I I'm still trying to see what what's the plan I keep hearing oh you could cross state lines I, I, I still haven't seen anything Smoke and mirrors, no plan, period. So it, it's just, again, it's, it's amazing to me. Also, got to get your take on him attacking uh, the GM union, uh, the GM plant shutting down in Ohio, trashing the union leader who was say saying, dude, we tried to email you uh, what's going on. Senator Tim Ryan, Congressman Tim Ryan said the same thing. Hey, we hit you up, got no response from you. Again, smoke and mirrors, all these union workers in Ohio, other places who supported Trump, are they now going buyer's remorse? I, I think that uh, many are. If you look at what's happening and look at what the president said when he was in Lima, Ohio, talking about it's the union's fault, it's high union dues, that's the reason why these plants are, are, are leaving, that, that has nothing to do with anything. Think about it. When he was running for president, he made certain commitments. He said that he was going to keep manufacturing in this country. He was going to reopen plants. He was going to bring plants back from overseas. Now he's got two years, 
And that record has not been fulfilled at all. And we've got to hold him accountable for that. So we are holding him an account accountable in Lordstown, Ohio, where they're talking about closing the GM plant, where they have closed the GM plant, in Carrier, in Indiana, where he said, this, this company's not moving. And they've reduced their workforce. Look at the facts. Look at what he has done in two years and compare that with the promises that he made to working families saying that their lives and their communities were going to be a lot stronger. So, so, so explain this. So on one hand, I listen to his supporters who say wages are up. But then he's complaining about union wages. Well, I, 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 thought, I thought if you support wages, but are these bad and these good? I'm, I'm trying to understand the logic here. Well, it's an attack. I mean, let's face it, we've, we've got to call it out the way that it is. This is really an attack on working people uh, to weaken folks who are trying to play by the rules every single day who want a seat at the table. One of the ways in which you get a seat at the table is to have strong unions in this country. 62% of Americans believe that the union movement, the labor movement, is vital, vital. It's that checks and balances against corporations and politicians who want to hurt working families. Wages are essentially flat, okay? If you look at the difference between the super wealthy, those that have a lot, that, that difference is increasing, it's growing. It's the largest it's been in American history. And in fact, um, the top 1% worldwide control 45% That's exactly of all right. wealth. I mean, the top 1% control 45% of all wealth worldwide. Something's wrong with that picture. And the only thing that we can do, and you've got to have a strong labor movement, and that's why they're coming after us. That's why we have a bullseye on our backs. They want to weaken us further so they can keep wages down, so those profits can be high, and they can hurt working families all across the country. That's the only conclusion that you can come to. But let me say this. I think they've overreached. I really so? believe that they've overreached. We had a case in the public sector called Janus. And essentially what that case did, when it became the law of the land, the Supreme Court heard it, it made <coughs> every single state in the public sector right to work, meaning that you don't have to be a member of the union, you don't have to pay union dues, yet you receive the same level of benefits that a member will receive. They tried to hurt us. They thought that was going to bury us. But, but, but in fact, but let's, but be, let's, let's be honest, the union movement also was scared to death, I mean, of Janice. I mean, a lot of people I talked to, they said, look, this may... This may severely weaken us, may take us out of business. That was real fear about this decision. It was real fear. So what, ha what has happened? But let me tell you what happened. We went back to basics within the union movement. Our union, AFSCME, went back to basics. We started talking to people one-on-one <coughs> -on -one every single day. We had one million one-on-one -on -one conversations with our members and progressive members saying, what are your expectations? What do you think? What are the issues that impact on you? Communicating with them, throwing away that uh, the iPhone, getting rid of that iPad, uh, iPad, and talking with folks, reconnecting with our members. When Janice hit, when that Supreme Court decision said this is going to be the law of the, of the land, folks said, uh-oh, they're coming after me directly. And we've got to stand up and we've got to make our voices heard. And you've seen that in state after state after state. Within AFSCME, we've been organizing new members at a record rate. Uh, since 2016, we've organized more than 26,000 members, even under the Janus attacks. So according to um, um, what you guys report to Department of Labor, Department of Labor, yeah. you've added 9,000 9, new members. 2018. 19,000 retirees. 19,000 retirees in 2018. And you've retained 94% of all we represented workers. 94%. Even with Janice being the law of the land, we retained 94% of our folks because they got it and they understand that the trade union movement, that unions stand in the way of folks who are trying to take their power and take their livelihood away from them. Were you and even, we've just got to continue that message. Were you even surprised by these numbers? I was. I was. Even We have developed this campaign we call Ask Me Strong. It's been going on for three, four years. We were expecting a higher loss. But because of the work that we did, rolling up our sleeves, all of our affiliates, not just the National Union, but our affiliates, talking with our members and with our progress and our potential members, our, our volunteers talking with their sisters and brothers, we were able to, to stop, to stop the bleeding and actually convince people 
in saying that we need our union. And the union is the only way that we can get better benefits, better health insurance, working uh, protections on the job, uh, all of those kinds of things, health, health and safety provisions. So people are coming back. And they're saying, okay, they're coming after us, but we've got to organize and mobilize and educate so we can't get hurt. So if you've so if if you done this and you've seen the impact, how do you now say, okay, we got to do the exact same thing to the non-union workers. we, we got to go to them and walk them through, the people who listen to conservative talk radio, who listen to Fox News, who listen to uh, Trump, who, who attack, 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 and say unions are the bane of Americans' existence. Um, is, is that now the next uh, wave? Because here we are at the end of March in 2019, eight more months left in 2019, presidential election in 2020. Uh, and th to me, this is going to be, especially now with Trump attacking the Affordable Care Act, uh, this is going to be a huge issue. So how do, like, what's the next phase? We've got to talk about what he is doing that is hurting working families. As I said earlier, there is a track record now, a two-year track record, things that he promised versus things that he is doing. And it is very clear that he's going after working families. Health care, okay? The tax breaks that he gave the wealthy corporations in the one, top 1% 1 while the average worker was getting hurt. The attack on unions, the attack on collective bargaining, ways in which our members and our communities can uplift themselves by having a seat at the table. We've just got to talk about the fact that these things are under attack and it's affecting you and your families and your communities. And when you have that kind of basic conversation, people get it and they understand it. Now, are we going to get back everybody who voted for Trump? No, I don't think so. Because there are other reasons why people voted right, for the right. president. But are we going to get back a good percentage of those who just want it to see if he would do anything differently to help them, and now they see that he is not doing anything to help them, he's doing things to hurt them, we'll get them back. Well, I think we also, I mean, we're, 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 I've been seeing this um, uh, in, in the media side. Uh, I look at BuzzFeed, I look at uh, the Los Angeles Times, I look at all these other different media outlets where workers have organized themselves and they've actually uh, joined uh, unions because they said, oh, wait a minute, hold up. You know, we, we thought uh, technology companies were taking care of us, but then it's also big business. And I think that, that that's the piece that uh, I think for a lot of people, they really don't understand. And, 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 and I, you've heard me say it before, and I have no issue, even if asked me being a partner of ours, I think the unions have hurt themselves by not by allowing, by allowing someone else to control the narrative and not telling their story. I mean, we celebrate Labor Day every single year, and the average person has no idea uh, where that even came from. Uh, you, you can go through just so many different things that are part of our daily life, and if you ask the average person, well, how do you think that actually came about? They have no union, they have no idea that actually that was the result of hard work from unions. And it's, you're right. I mean, we have got to take the full responsibility of educating uh, not only our union members, but working families who may not be in unions because they've had a positive, unions have had a positive Im impact on their lives also. That's why you and I have a good relationship because you have an audience that we want to connect with. We want to educate and mobilize that audience to say, this is what trade unions have done for you and your family. Oh, no. I mean, I'm, I'm, look, my dad worked for Amtrak. Yep. I mean, the reality is that's what, I mean, that's what took care of our family and put, put me through college and, uh, you know, to this day. So, you know, so I, you know, I, I live that experience. And that's what I think also is, is interesting. Uh, and I'll be, I'll be, so it just popped into my head. I'd be very curious. Um, do y'all, do y'all have a campaign uh, that, that, in, that involves uh, next generation folks who, who, who have grown up now, who can tell a story of, I'm where I am because my mom or dad was in a union? Mm -hmm. And within AFSME, we have what we call the Next Wave program, which is the young members, 35 and under, and we have them telling a story as far as what the union has meant to them and their families, their mothers and fathers, their grandparents, and why we've got to really keep those benefits. We've got to keep that energy alive. And other unions are doing the same kind of thing. Something else that we've got to do is we've got to promote uh, the late labor education in public schools uh, by having specific programs where students 
understand and are learning about the importance of labor and what has been done. The 1968 strike in Memphis, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that was a strike they were, they of were sanitation workers. Sanitation workers. Right. AFSCME members. And as a matter of fact, April 4th, coming, uh, mm -hmm. coming up next week. Uh, we were down in Memphis last year, yep. the 50th anniversary, telling that story and making the connections of what the labor movement has done for our communities all across the country. We've got to continue to talk about that. Nobody else talks better about that than our members and those who have been affected and those who are in unions. Are you hearing enough about wages uh, in working class families from the Democratic candidates thus far? We are. As a matter of fact, I am very, very um, happy uh, with what the candidates are saying. And we're going to continue to push them. Make no mistake about it. But I've got to be honest with you, five, six, seven years ago, we had some of our allies and friends in the Democratic Party that would not use or say the word union. Now they're doing it. They're even doing it when I'm not in the room. Mm -hmm. So that means that something's <laughs> happening that's good, right? And we're going to continue to push that. And I think that there is a connection, and people understand that connection. People understand that we are the checks and balances against those who are trying to take our rights away from us. So our friends are standing up to the plate. And you look at what happened in the election in 2018, where we were able to flip seven governor's seats. We were able to flip some state legislatures because people concentrated and talked about the importance of supporting working families all across this country. But I think one of the things that, um, again, um, when you go back to narrative, and look, and look, I mean, I'm in that business, um, is that we... We, we, we created this, uh, this picture of, uh, through celebrity, I think, through just hype of, of these huge companies and, just, and, and, and uh, billionaires and lifestyles and things along those lines. I think like, people got so consumed. I mean, look, and I, look, look at all the hype around Trump. Oh, oh, oh he's rich and successful. Then I kept going... Yeah, but there were people at his casinos, small business owners, who he wouldn't pay. Mm -hmm. And then would tell them, oh, I'll, I'll hold you up in court, so I'm going to pay you 10 cents on the dollar. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, so you take pride in that? You, you, so you, you're siding with him over that small business owner, and you're saying, oh, that's a good businessman, and you're taking pride in that, but how would you feel when your boss does it? And I think when we look at uh, so many other companies, even technology companies. I think, I think a lot of Americans got so wrapped up in also media hype that was driving this that they didn't realize that uh, I'm actually being screwed by this. We, we, we were taught, oh, consolidation is great and it's wonderful. But, I mean, right now, Hollywood studios are realizing this. Fox is laying out 4,000 people because of Disney acquiring. It's four, and those jobs are not coming back. So I think what's happening is, I think people are people have to be trained to go. Okay, you're getting screwed. So you might think this is great what you're watching on television, but how much money is in your pockets? Can your children get a job? Can they be fed? Can they be educated? Will you have health care? I think that's also part of that. Just sort of reprogramming people to say, no, no, no. You think that's great? Yeah, for that person who's now worth five billion. It ain't great for you. That's right. They want to hold on to as much cash as possible. They want more. And they want, they want you yeah. doing the three, four, five different jobs from a productivity standpoint so they don't have to hire anybody else. That's why it's so important for us to continue with our coalition partners to, to organize and mobilize and educate our communities every single day of the year and talk about the issues that impact on them and their families. And that's what we're doing. And that's what we've got to continue to do in 2019 and 2020. I really believe, and you've heard me say this before, that I think we're in the middle of a movement moment where communities are coming together saying, whoa, 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 we didn't bargain for this. This is not what we thought was going to happen. This is impacting on a lot of folks. I know it's impacting on me, and this is wrong. And you've got people coming together saying, stop stop. We've got to get back to basics here, and we've got to fight. And, 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 and again, what I've said before is, he now has a track record right. of hurting people 
And we've got to promote that. We've got well, to look talk at, about look, that. Look, look at Carrier. I mean, all that hype. Oh, we're going to save your jobs. Yep. Carrier took the tax breaks. Oh, took the, all the public adulation. Yep. Six months later, gone. See y'all later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm, I'm like, yo, that was a PR move. And, and he's, he's going to blame the unions. And he took the tax breaks. Come on, man. <laughs> that, that doesn't even work. It doesn't even work. It doesn't even pass muster. So, again, it's about educating our folks. And I think that you're, we're in a moment where people are saying, this is wrong. And we can no longer be silent. Well, I, well, that I, 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 yeah, because I think because what happened, what happened was uh, people kept falling for the hype. Okay? We were told, oh, first of all, now, now we knew it. The, oh, $1.5 trillion tax break. Oh, all of these companies, they're going to take that money, and they're going to reinvest. reinvest it to the company and to workers' wages. And then people got pimped. Here's a $1,000 bonus. A bonus. And people are like, oh, Not great. Not even in your way, but a and bonus. It's like, okay, okay. I appreciate $1,000 bonus. What about next year? Yep. And the year after that? Yep. Wasn't a $1,000 annual increase. It was a one-time bonus, which they also got write-offs from. And so people went, wait a minute. And so all the talk, all oh, wages are going to go up. And then when you hear wages going up, well, then the question is, well, how much? If the stock market is exploding and is doing so great, and if these companies, I mean, look, the repatriation, comp American companies uh, had $2.6 trillion in overseas profits. They had no intentions. And then what happened? Tax break goes through, and they sat there, oh, we're going to buy back stock. That money went back to the shareholders. When half of America doesn't even have money right. in the stock market, right. and what so went to the workers. And again, yes. I, I th again, I think I think what happened is, I think when you watch when you watch these business networks, in many ways they look like sports networks. It's oh, the economy is zooming, it's going great, and people are like oh, that's great. And then they see this billionaire and that billionaire. Oh my God, look at their yachts and houses, and you're going. You, you, you know you're broke. You know you're broke. And I think, I think it became psychological. People thought that, that that image meant America's back. But when you have 80% of America who, if they have an emergency, they don't have $1,000 to grab, no, that's, to me, the real concern. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, we've got to take advantage of this moment. I really do believe that. And I think that people are primed to say, hey, Enough is enough here. This is wrong. We can't continue to go down this direction, and we've got to make change in which everybody has a seat at the table and everybody can share in this nation's prosperity. And that is not happening right now, and that's what we've got to get back to. The labor movement plays a vital role in that, along with our community partners, our coalition partners. And from now through 2019 and 2020, we've got to stand up, we've got to raise hell, make our voices heard, and then go to the ballot box and say, we're going to get these folks that are trying to hurt us or kill us, get them out of the way and elect folks that are worker friendly. Well, that's why we created this show. That's why, uh, for us, Focus on 2020. We created this segment called The American Worker uh, to break down these things uh, uh, two and three times a month to really be able to show people and walk them through. Because I think part of the deal is when you don't know, you don't know. And all of a sudden, when you, someone walks you through, it's like, whoa, I didn't realize that. Now you understand yep. why these things matter. So I look forward to it. Lee, appreciate it. Thanks a bunch. Keep on fighting, man. All right, keep giving all them right. hell. Keep your voice heard. They're going to help run it, or they're going to run it for you. In order to get anything done in this world, we have to work with the system that's there. And you have to have the courage of your convictions. You may despise me, you may not understand my choice, but at least you can respect that I stood in it. If you are outside the mainstream, no one can push you aside any further. Life makes you jaded and it hurts you and it's painful. And we've had a lot of pain in this country. Trump can show up and say anything and they can just go, oh yeah. And the African American community was great to us. They didn't vote. You know, he just called you stupid. Did you hear that? Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, but he's for us. Really? And they were just regurgitating the things that they had heard on a radio or in the barbershop or something that somebody had told them. They hadn't thought about it. Democracy is uh, in danger is because people don't know how to think. I'm done with trying to convince people to try to vote for their, you know, for their for their life. You have to run for your life. I'm gonna go try to get people who are open to it and, and, and lead them. I'm done with hope. Fuck hope. Fight. That's good. Every day, 100 Americans are killed with guns. Hundreds more 
are shot and injured. One third of gun deaths are murders and black people represent the majority of murder victims. In fact, black people are 10 times more likely than whites to be killed with a gun. The government can't or won't help us. So what can we do to decrease the number of black people dying because of gun violence? The Circle of Brotherhood is an organization of primarily black men from all walks of life who formed an organization to address the issue. Today marks the 19th day that some of these men have been on a hunger strike to draw attention to the problem of gun violence in black communities. Joining us now is the executive director of the Circle of Brotherhood, Lyle Muhammad, and a member of the Hunger Nine, Albert Muhammad. Welcome to Roland Martin Unfiltered. It's our honor to be with you, and it's our honor to be amongst this august body of men and those who are listening across the country. I am so humbled that you all took the time uh, out of your lives, basically, to care enough about this issue to turn down your plates and turn down your lives to do something about it. What if you could speak to a million people like you are right now? Would you want fellow Americans and people around the world to know? Number one, I want them to know the impetus of what led these nine brothers to make such a sacrifice. The Circle of Brotherhood has been in the community for years doing the work that only we can do. Black men who, many of us, to be honest, used to be part of the problem. In our organization, we say we come from the streets to the suites. About two months ago, some of these men you see with me now were at a vigil primarily for mothers of slain children. And it was at this vigil where our brothers were participating, it's harsh enough to hear the wailing of one mother, but they heard the wailing of then 10, then 20, then 30, 40 to 50 mothers wailing over the loss of slain children. And at that point, it pierced their hearts to such a degree that they decided that we have to do more. So conversations begin to take place, which led to the development of Operation Hunger and we want people to know across this world right now that these nine men who are here with me now have had nothing but water for the last 19 days in a show of sacrifice and commitment to decreasing the gun violence in our community, stimulating the conversations and dialogues that need to take place. We're camped out right now in what some people will call the famous Liberty Square or others would call the infamous pork and beans, right on the corner of Northwest 62nd Street in Northwest 12th Avenue. Many areas where people are afraid to come, but we've been here and there have been miraculous things taking place over these last 19 days. Well, thank you so much for your sacrifice. I do appreciate that. And, you know, we out here, we see your sacrifice and we don't want you to starve. I know my panel is here and we don't want you to keep being on water right there at 16th and 12th, 66th and 12th. What can we take to members of Congress, to state legislatures? What is it that we can take to them that's tangible that we can say, if you do this, then these brothers will start eating again, or if you do this, then that at least will be a catalyst for change? Really, there's nothing that we can take to Congress that will have that impact. But there is a message that we can take to our people when we decided to embark upon this endeavor, it wasn't about passing legislation. It wasn't about meeting a particular demand. It was about waking up the desensitized people in our community to understand that we got an issue with each other. We got an issue that we have to start dialoguing about the things that we allow to take place. And so that internal dialogue for us is the most important thing. I will say that there have been many people who have visited here, from politicians to perpetrators of the crime. We were even visited by some of our members in the Parkland community who came down who understand that this issue is bigger than all of us. So if there are people who are involved who want to take things to legislation, but the message of these men here is we want to be involved in solving our own community problems. 
Well, thank you so much for that. And as this host always says, we have to be the ones responsible for our own freedom. We are with you, not just in prayer, but we are resolute in a commitment to take action, not just my panelists tonight, but the host Roland Martin and all of the people who are watching Roland Martin Unfiltered. Thank you so much for your sacrifice. We appreciate you and we are with you. Thank you. New York Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio or Cortez really I mean unreal really the way she gets under the skin of Republicans and conservatives maybe because she's smart effective and has millions of Twitter followers yesterday she responded to charges that the Green New Deal that she supports Mm, that she authored is by and for elitists. Watch this masterclass take down on Capitol Hill. But aside from that, when we talk about uh, the concern of the environment as an elitist concern, one year ago, I was waitressing in a taco shop in downtown Manhattan. I just got health insurance for the first time a month ago. This is not an elitist issue. This is a quality of life issue. You want to tell people that their concern and their desire for clean air and clean water is elitist? Tell that to the kids in the South Bronx, which are suffering from the highest rates of childhood asthma in the country. Tell that to the families in Flint, whose kids have their blood is ascending in, in lead levels. Their brains are damaged for the rest of their lives. Call them elitist. Tell, you're telling them that those kids are trying to get on a plane to Davos? People are dying. They are dying. And the response across the other side of the aisle is to introduce an amendment five minutes before a hearing and a markup. This is serious. This should not be a partisan issue. This is about our constituents and all of our lives. Iowa, Nebraska, broad swaths, swaths of the Midwest are drowning right now underwater. Farms, towns that will never be recovered and never come back. And we're here and, and people are more concerned about helping oil companies than helping their own families? I don't think so. I don't think so. This is about our lives. This is about American lives. And it should not be partisan. Science should not be partisan. This, we are facing a national crisis. And if we do not ascend to that crisis, if we do not ascend to the, to, to the levels in which we were threatened at the Great Depression, when we were threatened in World War II, if we do not ascend to those levels, if we tell the American public that we are more willing to invest and bail out big banks than we are willing to invest in our farmers and our urban families, then I don't know what we're here doing. I don't know what we're here doing. No charcoal girls are alive. Why? I got you, Carl. Yeah, um, illegally selling water with our permit? On my property. Whoa! Hey! Hey, remember. Give it to Eric. I'm uncomfortable. This guy is a whole order of magnitude crazy. He went to a Mexican restaurant, and then this happened. Mexican. We're not in Mexico. We're in America. I'm in America. I don't think you'll get a Who are you going to call? Huh? What are you going to call? Immigration. For what? For you. Why? Because you're not legal. We're not in Mexico. We're in America. But, like, he went to a Mexican restaurant. Let's look at it again. Let's look at it again. Mexican. We're not in Mexico. We're in America. I'm in America. I don't think you'll get a Who are you going to call? Huh? What are you going to call? Immigration. For what? For you. Why? Because you're not legal. I don't even know what to say. Panel, we're not in Mexico. We're in America. What say you? Can I, we all I, get along? I, I've, I've grown up with crazy right people in New York City, okay? It's supposed to be a city that's integrated. Yeah. It was not. Not in my day. 
okay? I'll just put that on the table. I've seen enough crazy white people. I just have to tell you, your folks, because I know I love you all in Roland, Trump's disciples yeah. deify him. Yeah, he can right. do no wrong. That's right. Remember that. The MAGA people deify him. They have made a whatever you want to call it out of this man. And if you talk to some of those folks, nothing. Nothing. Okay? It's, we're not going to get them. What we're going to have to do when I say we, as, as, as if I were a Democrat, Collective. but I'm, I'm, I'm a journalist, so I'm, I'm all over the place. But you're a public rat. But I have to say, <laughs> but I have to say this. It is very important that the Democrats choose someone who can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Donald Trump and after that, like take Evan down, I? take down, hold, no, I didn't say, I didn't mention any words, and then go to toe to toe with Trump and take down Vladimir Putin, who is running our nation, and then take on back, take back America from the brink of disaster because Donald Trump, who never had a job in the federal government, I've had three, and I know other people who have had them too, he doesn't know what he's doing in there. Trust me, we have to come back from the brink of disaster, and we need a very powerful man or woman who can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this guy and bring us back. Let's go with woman. Dr. I, Jefferson? I had a brain freeze watching that. I really did. I had a brain freeze. I'm just like... Just clouded over. Just like, I mean, really? The level but it is, of, it's out there, isn't it? It's out there, and it, the thing is, it's more celebrated and it's more opening, again, because Trump is normalizing and celebrating white supremacies. He's giving these people the, you know, a, a good wink and a nod. Yeah, that's okay. You know, I, I'm not... White Isn't supremacy. it odd to you that one person has that much power, though? He has the bully pulpit. He's the president. He's the leader of the free world. It's a little scary that that's it's very what a president scary. can do, though, right? It, it's, it's very scary. And it's, Skip him. I'm but, done but, with him. But you know what? Elections matter. I just got to say this. They do matter. Elections matter. Consequences. There are serious consequences, and we're starting to see people who think that they can sit out an election. You know, I don't care if it's federal. I don't care if it's your local dog catcher. All elections matter. Please and I do vote. Think, please do vote. And I think that Jerk this is TV. an example of it. You know, I think this is an example. When you don't vote, this is what you get, America. This is what you get. Learn the lesson. And, for, and, and skip the brainwash people. I understand what Dr. B was saying. Skip them. Well, because, some, are, some of them I mean, can be brought. I did talk radio. Some are learning. I DNC. Mm -hmm. I was on Oliver North, G. Gordon Liddy. And you know what? Not everybody listening to talk radio, conservative talk radio, is a loon. People Some are listen. even learning now. That's right. As today, they figure out, wait a minute, no more health care? Uh, my tax They're break? figuring They're it out. Their I think the reason Cleo. why, I remember you and I, I remember um, Avis DeWeaver were together. <laughs> all, a long time ago. A long time ago, but I'm talking about right before it was announced that Trump was president. A long time ago. And I was at the restaurant, and I was you know, do, relaxing because I knew he was going to win, and I articulated that, and people argued with me several people, I won't say their names. And the reason why I think that these people keep winning is because we keep on operating from a place which we should. There's a place for logic. There's de a definite place for rational, rational behavior. But these people are not coming from a place of rationality. They're coming from a place of desperate clinging to the idea of white supremacy and white power. These people, like this guy we just saw in the restaurant, He's not thinking rationally. He's thinking, uh, he, like you said, he went to a Mexican restaurant. That's like going to a, a Japanese said, restaurant and complaining about... And fight. said, don't speak Mexican. Right, He's right. He's going there looking for a fight. What but, is that? But the bottom line is that... Is that a language? Trump, not educated. See, we keep focusing on Trump, but Trump had millions and millions and millions and millions of people who voted in him, number one. Number two, Trump has not changed. Trump was Trump before he became president. Mm -hmm. People were being beaten up at, at his rallies. And what he people was was were, a performer. Yeah. But the bottom line is that he was voted in after grabbing pussies. So so we, we keep acting Dang, like... Which did we have to go... He went, well, no, it's real. I mean, well, no, we, we keep acting like something has changed. He did not grab them. He said you could. Well, you well, know what I, I mean. We don't know. We don't, the, 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 all that's... The, the, point, the point I'm taking is, I'm <laughs> saying is that Donald Trump has not come into the White House and the changed. Show took a whole he's turn. come into the oh, White House and he's it being, he's being Trump. Like, I, there's something, well, I, I don't have time to get the end of the show. No, but we're not going to win racist, can I say, if we keep thinking that reason is going to transform people. And a lot of people, if One I One of the things that this guy said with all these brothers that was around him when you asked him about Congress, he was like, that ain't, it's not about Congress. He's like, we don't care, we'll just starve. 
That he was interesting. But he also said, that's not all he said. He, he also said, we're not starving for y'all to bring legislation. He said something I think we need to listen to if we want to get people to be on the side of rational behavior or off the side of white supremacists, is he said that it's about what we do in our community. It's about what's happening in our immediate lives that concern us. Dr. Buell, quickly, then uh, we got to uh, yeah. end. The, the racists who, who are supporting Trump cannot believe he is he won and they cannot believe that a black man was elected in their so-called right. racist country yeah. not once yeah. twice yep. and that's what happened in that election and no matter what hillary did well she did win the popular vote he, he had overcome what the racist thought of of barack obama who was a i didn't agree with everything he did and i worked in his white house too as a journalist and i respected him as a good man I get it, I get it. Let me paraphrase MLK. It's not these haters, right? It's not the hatred. It's not the ones that show up with hate that win. It's the ones that have no hate that don't show up at all, mm. right? Mm -hmm. That's that's our the problem. Vacuum. It's these people in the middle who stay home because they don't like a Hillary or they now don't like a Kamala and they, or they're not sure about a Biden. Everyone is all or, the same. But it, and, and, and it's not all the same. Right. And so there's this big, huge gap in the middle. And I'm telling you, by the time we get to 2020, we better fill it with some answers and some compassion and some caring or we're going to be here all over again. That's Yo, it TV. for this edition of Roland Martin Unfiltered. By all means, get out the vote. As Dr. Buis says, not just you. But everyone next to you, as Dr. Jefferson says, vote for the dog catcher. As Dr. Cleo says, vote if you care or not. I'm Monique Presley. Roland will be back tomorrow, live from Los Angeles. I'm no more in the chair. After three seconds, two seconds, one, I'm gone. Bring the funk. Holla! You want to check out Roland Martin Unfiltered? YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roland Martin Unfiltered. See that name right there? Roland Martin Unfiltered. Like, share, subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And don't forget to turn on your notifications so when we go live, you'll know it. You want to support Roland Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. As Roland Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Hey fam, want to check out Roller Martin Unfiltered, the blackest show on all of digital cable and broadcast. Want to check out our audio podcast. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Martin Unfiltered. Press play.